How's it going? My name's Nico. I go by Cointrick and Cointrick Twitch Online. If you want to see more videos like this one, please remember to like and subscribe. Hit that bell so you get notified every time I upload another one of these videos. Hey, how's it going? My name's Nico. I go by Cointrick and Cointrick Twitch Online. We've been doing a series of three-part videos where we teach you guys how to make and master classic cocktails, and then how to build up your bar around that style of cocktail. So in part one, which we've already done, I show you how to make and master a classic cocktail. In this case, it's the whiskey sour. And then in part two, which is this part that you're watching right now, I show you some similar ingredients that you can get to substitute into that original recipe and some additional ingredients that you can get to make even more classic cocktails. Then in part three, we're gonna get weird. I'll show you how to make a signature cocktail in that original style. So in this case, it's gonna be an egg white style cocktail. And I'll show you some extra techniques that you can use at home or at work to make sure that your drinks really do stand out. Quick note, egg whites as an ingredient in cocktails are incredibly common, but they were really, really common way, way back, especially during prohibition because the egg whites would mask the scents of really astringent or artificially flavored liquors because during prohibition, many people were bootlegging and passing passing certain liquors off as others. So like, rather than making gin, they would just take vodka, throw a bunch of botanicals in there and call it gin. Instead of making whiskey, they would take moonshine and put some food coloring in there and some other artificial stuff. And this is, <laughs> this is very dangerous to do. No one should do this. Uh, but they were using egg whites to sort of mask those flavors in cocktails. What we learned relatively recently, as far as mixology goes, is that you can also use those egg whites and you can use that same principle to soften the harsh flavors in really complex cocktails. So it's kind of like the egg whites wrap the ingredients in a satin robe or a cashmere sweater, whatever your preference is. And that way they can all play well together. They all get along in the glass. So what are some of those similar ingredients that you can pick up relatively easily? And what are those extra cocktails that you can make? Well, I would recommend that you go and pick up a bottle of gin, a bottle of amaretto, some grenadine or make grenadine at home. Pick up those Angostura bitters if you haven't picked them up already. Get a bottle of red wine, a bottle of champagne or Prosecco or some kind of sparkling wine, and then some club soda. I know it's not a lot, but stick with me because you can now make a lot more cocktails. The simplest thing to do, you can make that original whiskey sour and just put some red wine, float that on top, and you now have a New York sour. You can also make a gin fizz or a silver fizz by taking gin, lemon juice, simple syrup, egg white, and club soda, served up in a Collins glass. You can make a French 75, which we mentioned in the highball video previously, with gin, lemon juice, simple syrup, and champagne, or some kind of sparkling wine, but traditionally champagne. You can make a clover club with gin, grenadine, egg white, and lemon. Or you can make a classic amaretto sour by using whiskey, amaretto, egg whites, lemon, and simple syrup, preferably a bourbon whiskey. So Nico, which cocktail are you gonna make? I feel like I am gonna make the New York sour. <laughs> so same premise, start off with a dry shake, then add ice whenever you're working with an egg white cocktail. So we're gonna stick with that same recipe we used for that whiskey sour originally. Two ounces of your bourbon. If you're making a New York sour, I might also recommend trying to do it with rye whiskey. Three quarters ounce of your simple syrup. And then we're gonna try for three quarters ounce of this lemon juice. Let's see how much we get. Perfect. I only had to use one half of the lemon. Fine, strain this out, get some of that pulp out of that. And now you have everything that you need. We're gonna dry shake this really quickly. Let's look at all those ingredients separate. Kind of weird, kind of chunky. Let's dry shake this, give it a nice hard shake. Whew. All right, I mentioned in part one, Whenever you're doing a dry shake because you're not shaking with any ice or anything that can break down in here, really, it's less about the form that you use to do the shake and more about how vigorously you are shaking it because you're just trying to beat the hell out of these eggs. All right, got all my ice. Put this all together. Let's grab that rock glass.
crack it open. We're gonna go with this fine strainer again. Bonus points if you can do the fine strain in one hand. This next step, <laughs> the last step is gonna be kind of weird. So grab your red wine. Uh, this it doesn't necessarily need to be a particular kind. Uh, and this one may be too high quality, but I'm probably gonna finish the rest of the bottle later on. Now the trick here is to gently pour the red wine because you want it to actually separate off the top. And failing that, you at least want some kind of gradient between the red wine, the egg white, and the whiskey and everything underneath. Easiest way to do that, in my opinion, is to use a spoon. And this may be too far from the surface. So I don't know if this is gonna work. I think I'm gonna have to cheat this a little bit and just kinda, there we go. Pull this over here, set the spoon on top of the liquid. get some of that red wine to float on top. And there you have it. That's what that looks like. You can see the wine floating here actually underneath the egg whites, but separated from the whiskey and everything underneath. The reason that this actually became a cocktail, I mentioned before that they used to add egg whites to prohibition style cocktails to cover the flavors of inferior whiskey and stuff like that. When that didn't work, they would add really aromatic, really pungent, really bitter things on top so that you would smell that instead of smelling the egg whites or instead of smelling the inferior product underneath. But still tastes really great. So let's see how it tastes. Cheers, guys. Ironically, <laughs> I'm not surprised. This is actually a pretty decent wine. Uh, ironically, somewhat, that actually tastes great. So why this cocktail? Two main reasons. One, uh, this is the easiest one to learn if you already got everything that you need to make a whiskey sour, because it is just a whiskey sour with red wine on top. But two, this shows that not only can you and should you use egg whites in cocktails, you can also use some other things that you wouldn't really think about incorporating into a cocktail, like a regular red table wine. So really interesting stuff. It's a really good way to get started, like getting into wine and stuff like that as well. In the next video, I'll show you guys how to make a signature cocktail, a signature egg white style cocktail, and some advanced techniques that you can use at home and at work to make sure that your drinks really do stand out. Thank you guys for tuning in, sticking around, showing up. I do appreciate it. Thanks for all of your help and support. Hopefully I've been helpful and supportive as well, since that's why we do everything that we do here. If you learned anything during this video, please like and subscribe and comment what drinks you wanna learn how to make at home.